We begin with a speed camera trap like no other, where in just 30 days, 21,000 drivers have been booked. The problem is no one can tell us just how accurate these cameras are because when we raise the question, the police just walked out on us. Jonathan Creek reports. I think that camera should be switched off. I think it should be properly investigated. It's a very rich stretch of road and it's something that I'll have to consider while I keep using it. Looks can be deceiving. This brand new 39 kilometre motorway is paved with gold. A lot of motorists are going to be suffering some very serious financial hardship having to pay these fines, as well as possibly the loss of their job through a loss of licence. In 30 days, the 22 speed cameras along Melbourne's East Link captured 21,000 motorists allegedly driving above the speed limit. A conservative estimate puts revenue for the month at $1.19 million. There's reason for suspicion and we're still looking. You need public confidence in the cameras or the whole system falls down. Of the 21,000 infringements, 14,500 originated from the cameras installed under the Wellington Road Bridge. 80% of those were for low range speeding. That's anywhere between 103 and 110 kilometres an hour in a 100 zone. The sheer volume of fines has many motorists questioning the accuracy of the cameras. I haven't had a speeding fine for probably about 30 years. And if I did, I'd certainly have a lot more speeding fines than, than just these two that have suddenly popped up with Eastlink. Ron Brady is far from pleased. He's lost two demerit points and must pay fines totalling $280. Caught travelling in both the north and southbound lanes by the Wellington Road Bridge cameras. I have my GPS in the car and it's on all the time and it's set at 100. It's both audible and visual. If I'm doing 102, the GPS goes off, it tells me. It just does not make sense. In fact, it doesn't make sense to hundreds of motorists, many of whom called into Neil Mitchell's 3AW radio program to complain. Well, they're saying that they've been booked, they believe, unfairly at this particular camera and all at the same level. The, uh, the, the, the recorded speed 108, the alleged speed 106. When a Today Tonight researcher called police media at 10am on Wednesday to request an interview, she was told to put it in writing. She did, and then followed up her email with phone calls on Wednesday afternoon and Thursday morning. Despite the superintendent of the traffic camera office, Shane Patton, talking elsewhere, we were forgotten. So we attended a police news conference yesterday to ask why. We've had an email in with police media regarding that speed camera. Why won't police media answer today, tonight? Oh, look, I'm, I can't speak on behalf of police media, I'm sorry. Traffic Commissioner Ken Lay handled the situation as best he could. Shane Patton's done interviews with 3AW, 7 News, every man and his dog, but not today, tonight. Why is that? Look, I'm, I'm, I, I can't answer that, I'm sorry. I don't know. But by 3pm, Superintendent Patton happily defended the cameras before ours, confident they're working properly. But traffic law specialist Dennis Morales remains convinced the government is more concerned with its bottom line than the performance of the cameras. The Victorian government actually anticipated that this camera was going to provide them with a $65 million windfall. So in the first month it's generated over $1 million, which is almost on par with the prediction. I was on cruise control for the duration of the freeway and uh, I was surprised that only one camera picked me up. The fact he was only stung by the Wellington Bridge camera is evidence enough for Jim Evans that they're out of order. I'm sure that speed cameras should be tested by some outside authority. We can't do any more. We've tested them. Everything is operating perfectly. They should just go pay their fine. Two things that caught our attention. When more than half a million speeding fines were analysed earlier this year, 87% were for the minimum offence, exceeding the speed limit by less than 15 kilometres an hour. And when Melbourne's Herald Sun newspaper questioned nearly 3,500 police officers, only 6% thought speed cameras saved lives. The rest agreed they're there for revenue raising.